Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Conversation Capital. Thank you so much to everybody that's been following the past few episodes that we've had. It's been really, it's been a really exciting journey starting this and just having different conversations. Please do remember to comment and let us know what is it you want us to chat more about, what are the conversations you want us to have. If you have any guests you'd like us to speak to, then make sure you leave it all in the comment box. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. My name is Ursula Mariani, and today I am hanging out you know when people say I'm hanging out with my best friend or my friend, but it's like, really, is it just because you guys are doing something? This is genuinely my best friend. So hanging out with my best friend who also goes by Chunky Girl Diaries. So her name is Nunguleko Mbesheni Malta, and she goes by at Chunky Girl Diaries, and she is a body positivity activist. Is that what we call you? Or That's intense. That is intense. I'll take it. Take, I'll take it. it. Take it. Own it. Take it. And we've also got the voice behind the mic who is Bonga, and we're chatting all things to do with being a chunky girl. And I love it because all three of us behind the mic today are chunky girls. Debatable. <laughs> According to who? According to what standard, where does chunky girl start? I always say chunky starts at 38. Wow. So at 38 and now you, you mm. join Team Chunky. I beg to differ. Okay, but... okay, okay. Okay, let's go. Let's get into it. Uh... Where does I don't know. I think it depends on how you perceive yourself. Yes. So maybe I think if you walk into Zara, for example, mm. I think to be okay in Zara, you need to be a 34 or mm. lower. Mm. Anybody above a 34 is chunky, according to me, because Zara doesn't cater for you. So you need to go to Truids or wherever else, um, probably some of the South African brands that cater to you. So I think it just depends on who you are, um, the environment, I went to a school that had um, only white people um, and I was the only sure. black person um, in my class for five years. And I felt it, I mean, this is silly, but amongst all this, the smaller, thinner white girls, leaps and bounds. Mm. I was, I don't even think, I think chunky is a polite way to say fat. I refer to myself as chunky, but the truth is society calls us fat. Yes. Mm. That's, it is what it is. Mm, mm. Um, so even when I came up with the, the, the name Chunky Girl Diaries, I was almost softening the blow to anybody who cares to consider themselves chunky. as fat. Mm, mm. Um, because I, I think saying, saying chunky, I mean, there's chunky cottage cheese. Mm. It, it's not a negative yes, yes. word, but fat is negative, yes. in my opinion. And for me, fat is actually derogatory. In my opinion, fat again, guys, kill a fool. Fat, yeah. what is fat? If you take a piece of fat, are you calling me that my brain, my skull, my fingernails, is that thing? Mm -hmm. I think it's quite offensive to it's be It's like fat. saying black. Yeah, You're not black. Yeah, You're black like, skin. Yes, like yeah. call me plus size, call me chunky. I personally am very offended. But it's interesting because the other time I was talking to another like very body positive uh, millennial actually you know typical 2000 and she kept like calling herself fat in all her videos i was about to say mm. a lot of people are starting to own that in order mm -hmm. to remove the, the, the negative connotation because mm -hmm. just like queer people yeah. now we use it as a definition of the lgbtqi yeah. mm -hmm. community but they owned it and tried to change the narrative, the narrative because around, queer okay. is different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so some people will call themselves fat as a way to own and almost normalize and almost a way to fight the stigma around mm -hmm. being a fat girl. That's true. Yeah. But I also think in the era that I was trying to, I remember I was so obsessed with trying to get a new iPhone because I wanted to take the best pictures so I could post them on Instagram mm. and be this person that other people can that, look yeah. to and feel less different or less isolated from everyone else. Um, I don't think in that era calling yourself fat was as easy as it is now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. maybe eight, nine years ago, mm -hmm. it wasn't as easy to say I'm fat. I mean, I know that I'm fat and I don't necessarily get offended if I hear someone say that I'm fat. I think I'm past that. I'm past that now, but I know that other people are still transitioning past and that. And you're past that because of the journey that you've had. That you've decided to take. Internally. In yeah, yeah. 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 yeah the, the, but putting in the work is also really important. But what was the moment? I mean, we're all kids. We all think, you know, we're all the same. And then there's a time where you learn that, oh, I'm not the same. You know, when, when did you have that first moment where you're like, how 
you know when when did you realize or, oh actually I feel like almost always but probably from grade one um and I that's think I had young. yeah I had mm. many moments to be sure. honest first moment was that in grade one they used to weigh us mm. weird life orientation exercise that I don't think has any value in the classroom but whatever they used to weigh us. Stop that stuff, teachers. Then, <laughs> I'm also here to say that. <laughs> while they weigh us, let's say weighing was some sort of constructive exercise. Mm. Now they are weighing us in front of each other. Yes. Mm. And children naturally compare. Mm. And I remember being the second highest mm. number. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm the second heaviest person in this class. Mm. And that was the first time I was like, wow, I didn't know I was that heavy. Mm. And then in grade two, we got weighed and now I was the heaviest person in the mm, class. Mm. Shoo. And I mean, many, many incidents. Mm. I remember the one time we had to write poems and liken ourselves to animals or I don't know, certain characteristics about mm. ourselves um, to animals. And the teacher had stepped out of the classroom and this guy was like, hey, Noku, you should um, write about being an elephant. That rubbish. That's the first um, thing that came to my mind. Well, I knew she was going to say elephant. Yep. I, I didn't want to swear. I respect you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> and this was probably in grade four, or grade sure, five. Sure. Um, and this was in front mm. of the whole class. Mm. And at the time, I was maybe like, I think I was a class captain. Mm. I always had some Leadership, sort of, yes. um, you look after the class, mm. or uh, we used to have confidential forms. Mm. So if somebody gets. Um, hey. Out of hand, then the teacher would give them a confidence. You probably got some. Uh, quite a few. <laughs> I've never had. You, a yours were always before. positive. Mine were negative. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had positive and negative. Yeah. So anyway, I was checking who's going to get a confidential form, and here this guy hits me with a line that I should write about being an elephant. I mm. cried and had to re-explain what happened to the teacher when she came back. But basically, that's just been my whole life throughout. I'm mm. um, in grade seven. As high, it was already starting to be very high school, high schooly, and very clicky. Um, there was a there was a period where we'd have um, have to wear casual wear to mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. and we'd pay five rand, and it was called Civis Day. Mm -hmm. So on Civis Day, um, part of the cliques, different cliques, had like, oh, we're gonna wear this, we're gonna wear that. So my clique decides that they want to wear jean skirts as an outfit or jean mini skirts it was a thing mm. um in the that early thing. 2000s uh, uh. um jean mini skirts as I part of that click i remember that did mm. and you probably wore a jean uh, mini skirt I did not knowing what i was. didn't own a jean mini skirt just because my body was never configured in a way mm. to accommodate a jean mini skirt already in grade seven mm. i was already dressing in the adult section probably from grade three grade mm. four mm. Mm. um so. And I had the privilege of having a mom who was in the retail industry. So I always had cool things. I never really mm. felt like I don't have clothes. I don't fit in because my things always looked weird anyway. Mm. But um, on this day, I am wearing whatever. Immediately when the clique decided they were wearing jean mini skirts, I already knew, Ugh, okay, I'm out, whatever. I'm just going to wear what my mom's already planned for Civi's day. And on the day... Always the best outfits, by the way, anyway. Listen, Thanks, even honey. now, yeah, even like now. I've told you before, yeah. Noku inspires my uh, outfits. Uh, then what happened, yeah? Um, then um, she, one of the girls in the other clique comes mm. up to me and says, um, how do you feel? How do I feel about what? Mm. Um, you're the only one in your clique who's not wearing a miniskirt. How did that make you feel? How does it make you feel um, to Can be left therapist? out? therapist? Yeah. Hey, but you. And I was sad. I went home and I told my mom. Like, people were wearing mini skirts. I knew they were going to wear mini skirts. I didn't care. But now I care because somebody has mm. made me aware of it mm. as some sort of disadvantage. Mm. Sure. Um, and yeah. I remember her telling me about just reminding me and asking me, who's that person's mother? And I actually knew the person's mother. And I said the name. And she said, is that mother your mother? And I said, no. Did, did she give birth to you? No. So why would you guys look the same? You're gifted in mm. different things. She's gifted in other things. And don't forget that. Hold on to that. Stick to what you're good at. Own what you're good at. Own who you are. And don't forget whose you are because mm. you didn't, her mom didn't give birth to you. So you're not going to look like her. Mm. Um, sure. So yeah, I, I've had reckonings my whole life. Mm. It's ne it's never, it never ends. It never ends. You just become better. Yes, at, at handling and taking that because it's always so unexpected sometimes. I remember the weighing thing when you talked about being weighed in class. I remember in matric, 
for LO class. That yeah. thing is stupid. I'm going to repeat it. Stupid teachers, you guys need to take that away. And so I also, you know, was a, a chunky girl. Mm. And so I've always been chunky from, I don't remember ever a time where <laughs> Latina bikini, like you know, give most people become chunky as they grow older. Yep. So they, and I think it's worse for those people because they they, rem- is, they reminisce on a time where they were once skinny. Yep. <laughs> and so I remember in this LO class, they want to wear us in front of everybody, and everybody's already commenting on everybody's weight. Mm. And now it's my turn to get on the scale. And I remember I had this best guy friend, Naftali. Naft, shout out to Naftali. He's like, Usha, I'll hide it so only ma'am can see. Because this teacher from Kosa Land, rest in peace, ma'am. I know you passed on. But this lady then says to me, um, if you don't wear yourself in front of everybody, I'm going to give you zero. To this day, I don't have a distinction for LO, guys. You know how <laughs> embarrassing that is not to have a distinction wow. for LO. Because she was just that so phobia. adamant that get over your insecurities, let the whole class see. Even with this, my friend covering things, she didn't want that. She was like, let the class see her weight. And I was like, what are you trying to do to me? Are you trying to destroy me? You know? <laughs> and it was just such a terrible... I never mm. forget it was such a terrible experience. And now the whole class was just like, get on the scale. Get <laughs> on the scale. You're not going to get a distinction for LO. Get on the scale. And I took my L and I said, I'm, I guess I'm not going to get a distinction for LO. Like we just... Did it take them further in life having a distinction in LO? <laughs> no. Nope. <laughs> it's fine. I also didn't get a distinction for LO because you had to run. And being the fat girl, I oh, was always at guys. the end. But I'm also Ronaldo trauma. So what are the other things that you've realized? Um, and this is the part where in the previous episode, if you guys didn't catch it, please make sure that you check it out. Uh, we talked about pretty privilege. And so during the pretty privilege, we spoke about colorism, right? Mm. And how being a lighter complexion. So the juxtapose now with you, Nungu is that you're also super light, right? So I, as your best friend, I've walked around with you in shops <laughs> and malls and, and people walk up to Nungu and they're like, because she's just got this very regal thing about her, you know, and she, you know, and people just immediately... And outside of being light, you're plus size, yes, but you're also plus size of a particular shape, which yes. is more palatable for a society. Yes, you know? the whole small so waist, big curves and hips. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. To hear how that has mediated yes. your Do you experience. ever find yourself ex- experiencing some kind of privilege in that thing that, you know, you're, you're the typical dudun tombi. Hey, yes. why is like donia manzi? You know, size, you're yeah, my size. size yeah, you know, do you ever in that context experience that, okay, here I am in the space, I'm palatable, as, mm. as long as it's, yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, with older men, Mm. and at a young age so i don't know if that's a privilege to be honest sure i think it was more of a burden mm. um yo i i felt that one uh mm. yo. from sure. high school mm. varsity mm. i don't think my dating sure. pool i don't think i afforded myself the awareness that people in my age group were an option mm. because of all the attention I got from mm-hmm. older men mm-hmm. and, and very the rarely boys, so true. my age mates until mm-hmm. later on. Yes. Um, this so, is yeah. so true. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I never, I never like joined the dots. I just thought older men liked me. <laughs> now I'm realizing it's probably because I've been chunky my whole life, you yeah. know? Yeah. And the, the younger boys, really, I mean, to them, yes. you're too deck for them. Yeah. Yeah. And they never become an option because... And next to me, my age mates look so tiny. Um, like, so I'm just like, mm, I get it, kind of. But yeah, your sure. age, your dating pool almost shrinks. And I know that Nunku, you're big on fashion. So those that don't know, Nunku's in the retail industry as well, following into her mother's uh, footsteps. And so she owns a boutique and she's very big on fashion and things like that. But have you ever found yourself disadvantaged in the fashion industry? Absolutely. Or misrepresented in the fashion industry? Absolutely. Mm. I, I even feel like that's probably why I'm so passionate about people owning their bodies and living confidently in who mm, they are mm. because of the, I feel mm. like fashion reminds you, I mean, you open your cupboard to get dressed every day. Mm. Your size reminds you daily that you are the wrong size. Mm. For me, that's mm. how I feel. Mm. Um, as soon as I have one too many slices of pizza, I try wear something and I'm like, oh damn, I need to lose weight. Mm. Um, just before an event. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm not discounting the fact that smaller people also go through the same mm. thing. Yeah. But Which when I walk into experience. Zara yeah. and Zara has a great sale, I've already excluded myself from the Zara sale because Zara doesn't cater to people my size. Mm. Um, I walk in, I need to go to the adult section or the plus size section. Plus size stores, 
I don't know, their designers or their sources just don't source things mm. that are trendy, mm. that yes. are the right colors, mm. or they just repeat the same yeah. thing over and over again. So one mm. finds themselves having to be mm. overly creative about how they look. Yes. And almost, I feel like my sense of fashion is almost dictated to by what fits me. Yes. I don't think I dress yes. how I want to dress. I mm -hmm. dress what fits me and yes. make it work into yes. my style. Yes. Like these very loose kimono type things that are in fashion. Always... Have you seen on Chunky Girls? They just look like... Like just, kitsu opener. Kitsu opener, man. And yeah. it's like, this is not the it's style. It's like not what it's supposed to look like. You know, it's all of a sudden very borsy and very saucy like... because they don't make the design... For us. Yay. And it's like we're always trying to hide something. Like I'm always mm -hmm. like, why is it so loose? Why is it so like what? And let's get to that. The disrespect that comes with being a, a chunky girl mm. wearing something short and people now mm. feeling like you need to cover up. Yes. yes. Your thighs are very inappropriate. Mm. Your like, thighs I I remember one in time. Church. Yes, I remember you <laughs> I remember this one time I'm sitting in church next to a slimmer girl. Who's wearing a much shorter dress than me? I remember mine came up to my knees. And this Asha comes with a little cloth, you know, how black churches are, and she wants to cover me. I'm like, whoa, look at this mini skirt right next to me. Exactly. But her thighs are more palatable. Palatable. Then when that size 38, you cover those things up. You know? But it's because weight is sexualized. It sure. is. And even as kids, um, mm. I remember my mom telling me a story about how she's so afraid having a a grandchild who is chubby mm. because grand uh, chubby little girls are more susceptible to, to yo, being raped, being yo. fondled and all sorts of disgusting things that men do hmm. because somehow they, they, they have more womanly features yes. mm. as a baby. Mm. You In know? fact, my mother had the same worries about me because I started being very curvy mm. at a young age and I would want to wear things that my age mates wear. Mm. I can look, they make me look like OC. Yeah. You know, when they sit on me, they don't sit like my age mates. Mm. So, yes. Or oh, too sexy. Mm. Yes, sexy. Because yes. curves are sexy, yes. right? Yeah. But you're just a child trying to play. I used to play wearing um, biker tights. I don't know what they're called. Mm. Uh, ski pants. Mm. Mm. But my mom would buy them for me in several colors. Because other kids were playing with short shorts. But mm. short shorts on me... Look sexy. too sexy, right? So I would wear biker shorts in different color, orange, green, mm. orange, uh, pink. Mm. Um, so now when I see it in fashion, I actually haven't even tried that fashion because it reminds me of how I was always concealing sure. myself. Mm. I was always having to wear biker shorts under my dress mm. so that my thighs don't show or and inappropriately people. and offend mm. somebody. Mm. You and know? you know, just speaking about biker shorts, um, there was this, I was in a, ta I'm in a taxi, we were waiting for it to get full. Then this lady, young lady passes by. She's wearing biker shorts and a shirt. Mm -hmm. Listen, guys, like maybe Gilisa is 32. And then the people in the taxi I got to So society is mm. even never satisfied because of the body type she has. It's like, you need to cover up. But for me, because of who mm. I am, it's like, that girl is dressed. Yeah, like, that's enough. Oh, no, I, I got to, yeah, but and too. it's like society is never satisfied. Even that mm. girl wore what she's comfortable with, and worse, she's a size thirty-two or whatever. Mm -hmm. But even that was not enough. Sure. Do you ever find yourself, ladies, just feeling grateful to be loved as a chunky girl, because you know how many times you've been rejected for being chunky? You know, let me start this because I had this reckoning. Um, varsity throughout varsity, mm. Nikki, I've been prevalent, can attest, mm. tiny waist, curves, mm. you know, I was the size 34, the typical yeah. size 34, mm. then I started gaining weight over mm. time, right? Mm. And then I, I would be shocked because it was a shift mm -hmm. where dating would come quite easily to me mm -hmm. and whatever, it was never a struggle. Not that it is, but, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but now... With my weight gain, I'm like, because it's new to me, mm -hmm. I didn't grow up chubby. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up on the plus size, but not chubby chubby. I was still palatable, mm -hmm. like we put it. So now when I'm plus size, I'm just like, you like me, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. it's even worse when I experience 
um attraction from guys who know the smaller bonga mm-hmm. it's like you still find me attractive mm. at this size mm. you know so it's been such a reckoning for mm. me like it's been interesting I, I haven't contended with it i have to be honest because it's mm. i'm still processing everything mm-hmm. so it hasn't made sense to me but it was it, it's something i found interesting to be like even the shift i'm like mm. i can as pretty as i am as lovely as i dress mm. and whatever mm. but this added weight has added a mm. gratefulness almost for yeah. particular sure. men still finding me attractive yeah i'll also i'll also say you know even with me and not even gratefulness i even like go to the point where if a guy's interested in me i want to see his track record i want to know that he's not trying out a newfound little fetish and then he's going to realize a few weeks later that Yamara went on on me actually because <laughs> it happens you know, yeah, guy. for you full force and then they realize oh, I, oh, no, didn't you see me the day maybe it means that you were just trying no, something how about out then like, how about hey. <laughs> you know now you know the reality sinks in that what what chunky actually means it yeah. means when I sit down it folds. Yes. Yeah, that's what it means. And they didn't realize. They thought maybe it still stays full. I don't know <laughs> what they thought. You know what I mean? So they, all those factors are coming to actually practically being with a chunky person and realizing what that means. Parking by the pavement, the car could go down and I could scrape your door when I open the... <laughs> there are factors. I'm sorry, guys. The exaggeration. <laughs> this is a true story. But anyway. <laughs> so, you know, things like that. I, I often want to look at somebody's track record. Mm. That's my thing. You know, beyond being grateful. I want to look at some I want to see, do you, do you actually have a real interest mm-hmm. in chunky girls? Or is this a newfound Nyana Snacks thing and you're going to break my heart yeah. to, and make me feel inadequate or want me to lose weight or whatever, you know? Interesting. Uh, I don't know. I think my experience is probably a little bit limited. But um, I don't think I saw myself worthy to be dated by anyone in my age group like i said Mm. so i wasn't offended that they weren't asking me out Mm. i just knew that unfortunately the Mm. cards have been dealt in this life Mm. i'm gonna have to wait until a decently older man oh, approaches me one day and I can handle that oh, age gap. <laughs> 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 um, mm. And in varsity, I barely, barely experienced advances. Um, mm. I mean, I consider it a gift somehow from sure. the universe and God mm. now. Mm. But at the time, I mean, when other people were like, oh, my mom's asking me out, my mom sent me a text, mm. my phone was quiet mm. and I was light according to i guess the privilege Mm. which i will not discount in other areas but in this specific area for Mm. me i feel like my size outweighed my my Mm. complexion yeah 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 Yeah. Mm. and someone i know this is goes back to our previous conversation so make sure you catch it um but someone i know would always be like he he's very dark Mm. and he'll always be like i'd be the last one to, to be chosen so you know how growing up like Omong um, lo um, um, will scout. Okay, this is the person I want. I'm big, I'm big. In a group, yes, mm. of young kids. And he'd always be like, I'd be the last one. Also, I'd be the, the one to be chosen because there's no one else. I wasn't chosen because I was the fat kid. Um, when t- choosing teams in school, mm. um, I remember going on a leadership um, training where we had to foofy slide over the river with no life jacket and I couldn't swim. And I just couldn't figure out how this rope was going to carry my weight. Mm. And I found it to be so insensitive mm. that they thought that I could safely, without any fear, foofy slide over a river. Mm. I mean, in the end, I did it and I was holding on for dear life. <laughs> Manoni. <laughs> but I was so upset. I feel like I've been bullied. That's why I hate, I hate camping. Mm. Because I associated with all the activities mm. I was forced to do yes. that I didn't feel safe mm. to do mm. or wasn't fit enough to do. Yeah, they designed and, these scrawny little kids. And didn't want mm. to do. I, don't, I didn't want to do abseiling. Maybe another fat, ab, uh, fat girl mm. might be into abseiling. But for me, doing um, mm. a marathon, that's not something fun to sure. do. We talk about, you know, in, with the context of romantic relationships. Mm-hmm. But I remember a time where I was, well, I won't say discriminated or bullied, but I guess it was a form of bullying. But one of my skinnier friends, mm-hmm. we're just chilling, getting ready to go out. And then she came across a picture where it was four girls, but didn't need short Ben, it's a jean. Hot Ben, you know, the mm-hmm. one with the butt cheeks are popping out. I still haven't owned one. Uh, on, why, why would we? You know, guys, <laughs> I, I, I look then, at my weight now. Then she says to you, I, you regret. Yes, not wearing those. 
those things. I'm like, what the I hell? am, but I saw short on sale. I'll hook you up. We are wearing them because no 10 years from now, we'll I'm regret. Like, yes, I'm like, what the hell? You were so tiny. Why were you Why not wearing Why did you have so many things? insecurities? Then this girl then says, um, so we're all in these, uh, this picture is over. And then she says, guys, you know, I really wish I had a click like this. And I just, I look around and I know that I can never do this with you guys. What? So that's what I want to get to. Have you ever experienced outside of a romantic con context? So we're talking now how it affects you romantically and mm -hmm. you and this. But outside of that, just from, okay, okay you told us about your um, classmate, Dr. Mm -hmm. your friend, talking about the jean mini skirts and, and society as a whole. I remember this one time, Nunku, you specifically told this lady, you said, ma'am, do you have a daughter? And she was like, yes. And she said, would you like somebody to say what she just said to me, to your daughter? I'm also someone's daughter. Do you remember that? Hey, you've been I feel dropping like I've bombs. had lots of those stories. <laughs> yeah, you've been dropping bombs. And that lady was so embarrassed to be like, ma'am, you've got a daughter. Why would you talk to somebody's daughter like that? I'm also somebody's daughter. You know, she was commenting something about your weight or along those lines. All the time. Yes. A lot of times I'm told that, oh, you're almost the same size as your mother. Oh, you're over. Mm. You're much bigger than her now. Or sure, you look older than what you are. Um, I went to the filling station the one time after a long time and the guy at the filling station was like, oh my goodness, you've gained so much weight. And I said to him, you're so lucky you said that to me. <laughs> and hopefully I'll be the last person you say this to. If I was someone else, I would have said so much. But mm. Abuti, skankrela mm. And oh, oh, you're disrespectful. I never, ever use that language with any woman again. Um, but it happens all the time. I mean, I'm from a, a family that's, uh, I can call it plus size, fat, whatever you want to call it. But all of us, right? And when we get out of the car, you know? And people perceive you some. You just make me laugh. I want to be I'm just saying, you know? Um, we're not the, mm. the white picket fence, mm. picture perfect mm. looking family, mm. according to society, mm. right? Mm. People think, oh my gosh, they overeat, they're so unhealthy. Yes, uh, when they're thirsty, know, but sort of fish oily. They send you <laughs> diets. <laughs> you know, well, have you tried Wayless? Have yes. you considered um, injecting yourself with uh, vitamin B3 complex? <laughs> have you tried Herbalife? <laughs> How about get a personal trainer? Honey, I've tried all of them. Mm. I, I love really myself. Do. Mm. That's I really do. I try all of them. You really do we try really all of do them. Try. Yeah. It's offensive. It's offensive. And who said I'm unhealthy? Mm. If they had to cut my body in half and mm. cut yours in half and assess the kind of things mm. that I put into my mouth versus mm. the kind of things you put into your mouth. Skinny Chances people. Are, skinny people eat anything. Dibo papa ganama. How? Have you seen me get <laughs> papa ganama? <laughs> of course not. How could I dare? <laughs> I'll be worse than what I am now. Oh, this is why I'm here. Because that's my, my, I almost said that's my, but that's my type of thing. Ba, ba, na, ma, no, what, we're getting, what we're getting at though, I think is that even with the standard things, like how dare you eat, Yes. You know, I remember you know this one what? time I was on camp. Camp is a place where you get bullied. Actually, bullied. I, I'm, I'm with you on this one. Camps, camps are the devil's work. This one time I'm on camp and I remember there's a, we've got very limited time. Uh, there's this thing that's going on, a, a little, uh, awards evening. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time I was even vegetarian, guys. I was a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And then they have got this, these awards. I'm the only vegetarian there. On this whole camp, I remember there was this one time where there were two burger patties and I took one. After eating the one, I realized, hmm, this was actually nice. And I went in and I got a second. That was the only time I went to go get seconds. During awards night, you know, prettiest girl of camp, tallest girl of camp, funniest person Gimba. of camp, Gimba of Camp Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> Gimba. Do you understand? I'm vegetarian. Can I go back to Arab Sankos? I'm not saying that you know I was the healthiest or whatever. No, but like, uh, what, what the hell? Sense? What the hell? Fat people have police policing them the whole time. I'm yeah. telling you, white gloves, everything you eat. Gimba, ba, 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 ba. A moment on their lips. Guys, I, like. I call out myself when I'm eating in public. I don't want a license gaining weight. I'm just like. Yes, you can't eat in public because everybody looks at you like that's why you like that. I've been fat my whole life and I eat very happily in public. <laughs>
<laughs> guys we do have very limited time so thank you so much for joining us i feel like this is you know we're stopping midway this yes. is a conversation that needs to continue at some point so we'll definitely chat to the bongas the baba lands the givens to make sure that we have an episode like this again where we just talk about the discrimination we've been facing for a really long time but Nokuleko, thank you so much for joining us we wish you all the best in your journey of body positivity and really just sharing and and encouraging people many people have come to me and said your best friend encourages me yes. and uh, bonga being one of them yes. you know just saying that you know you're doing a great work and you're doing a great job friend and i really wish you all the best and continue doing the absolute most once again Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And once again, thank you so much for joining us here at the Conversation Capital. Don't forget to comment and tell us who you want us to talk to, what you want us to talk about, and catch us at the very next episode. Like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. What else? What else is being said? All those things. Do what you need to do. Goodbye and God bless.